At this point, you should be comfortable with the fact that you need some basic parts to have a usable computer, mainly a CPU with a motherboard that holds the processor and RAM, and probably a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor so you can see what you're doing. In the next chapters, we'll take a much closer look at mice and keyboards and how to use them. But for now, let's get you going on the computer itself. Let's work through powering the computer on and off, what it entails, and what options you may have. This is actually called the boot process. The boot process is, as you might guess, the process of starting the computer. The computer must go through specific steps in order to be ready to perform computing functions. Remember, we have all of those electronics sitting in there, but as they're sitting in there, they really don't do anything. They have to recognize certain things. When you power on the computer, this process starts. The computer will load initial instructions from the ROM memory, detect the operating system and any attached hardware, start certain computer applications that it needs in order to get ready to work, and then you're all ready to go. Now this, of course, is a simplified explanation of what goes on. It can be very, very detailed. But for our purposes, we can kind of narrow it down to these four things. Powering it on, loading initial instructions from ROM, detect the operating system and hardware, and then start certain computer applications. It's easy to remember what the boot process is if you think about waking up in the morning yourself. What do you do? Well, maybe we all do it a little bit differently, but basically the alarm clock goes off, or if it's a nice day on a weekend, you get to wake up on your own. But you might kind of open up one eye, and the first thought might be, uh, who am I? And what day is it? And then it might be, well, okay, let me get started. I need to sit up and put my feet on the floor. I need to remember that I have certain things going on. And then you go through certain processes. I don't know what those are and I don't want to get into them, but maybe you brush your teeth, eat breakfast, feed the dog, get dressed, those types of things. The boot process is exactly the same way, and it happens the same way every time. There are actually two different ways to boot a computer, though, called a cold boot versus a warm boot. A cold boot can also be called a clean boot. This is what happens when you first power on a computer after it's been turned off for some period of time. So you've been gone for the weekend, you come back to work, and you push the power button on your computer. That's what we're talking about. A cold boot ensures that all of the temporary memory and internal settings have been completely cleared. Basically, the computer has been in a powered off or an at rest state, and you're going to wake it up from the beginning. The way to do this is to press the power button. Now at this point, we're talking about starting the computer, not restarting or turning it off. We'll get to those things in just a little bit. So for now, a cold boot can only be completed by pressing the power button. A warm boot, which can also be called a reset, is a little bit different. This is restarting the computer without completely turning off the power. This does still erase RAM memory and reloads the operating system. You might want to do a warm boot if your computer all of a sudden is acting funny, because possibly you have too much stuff in RAM, the RAM memory is getting a little bit confused, and you simply want to reset it. Another time when you might do a warm boot is after you've installed some software or an application. The computer may ask you to reboot the computer, again, to make sure that everything is set up the way that it needs to be and it has kind of a fresh start. In order to do a warm boot, you can choose Restart once the computer is already on, or you can press a keyboard combination known as Control-Alt-Delete. Now remember, we can't do a warm boot if the computer is already off. A warm boot is something we do once the computer is on. Now remember, when you first power on your computer, you're not going to see anything on the monitor yet. You're going to push in the power button. You should see the power light go on on the CPU case. You'll probably hear your hard drive start to spin up, and the computer is going to start going through that boot up process. You will probably also see some text flashing across your screen. This is all of those startup instructions, a lot of which will be very technical, and usually you don't need to worry about it at all. If you want to read it and try to make sense of it, feel free to do so. But basically, the first part that you're going to be concerned with is when it starts to load the operating system. In this case, we're going to be loading Windows. So I'm going to press the power button, get it through the initial boot up process, and let it load the operating system for us. As the operating system loads, it'll tell you to wait, it'll give you a welcome, and as long as you see the little spinning donut, you'll know that Windows is loading and you're okay. You'll hear Windows theme music as the operating system loads, if you have speakers and they're turned on. 
Depending on your computer, it may take a few seconds to even a couple of minutes for the computer to load. It really depends on how much hardware you have, the operating systems, and all kinds of technical stuff in the background. But ultimately, you'll end up at the Windows desktop in this case. And this is a good sign. Congratulations, you've just successfully powered up your computer. Now the question though is, what do we do if we want to do one of those warm boots or we want to reset the system? Well, there are a couple of ways to do this, but what I'd like to do is to show you the Start button, which is on the lower left side of your screen. Now, whether you're using Windows 7, Windows Vista, or even XP, you're going to have the Start button, even though it may look a little bit different. So find the button on the lower left that either has the Windows icon on it, or it actually says Start, and give it a single left click with your mouse. A menu will come up, and you'll notice near the bottom right-hand side, there is some version of a button that says Shut Down. Again, this happens to be Windows 7, and so mine actually says shut down right on the button. If you have a prior version of Windows, it may say something different, but there will also be a little right arrow. If you do a single left click with your mouse on the arrow, this is where you get to see a lot of your options having to do with shutting down, powering down, and switching users. At the top of the menu, I see an option to switch users, as well as simply logging off. Now these are concepts that we haven't gotten into yet. We'll talk about these when we set up user accounts as well as talking about networks. So I want to talk about just a couple of the other ones that are a little more basic at the moment. First of all, we do have the opportunity to lock a computer. Locking a computer simply puts up a login screen so that anybody else who walks by the computer can't use your computer without permission. This is a perfect thing in a business environment, probably not necessarily in your home, unless you don't want other people, like the kids, using your computer. We were talking specifically, though, about warm boots and cold boots, and this is where I can go in and actually restart the computer. If I click on this Restart option, you'll see that it actually tells me, closes all open programs, shuts down Windows, and then restarts Windows again. Once you click on the Restart option, you're not going to have to do anything. You're just going to sit back. The computer will go through both the shutdown and the reboot process on its own. You also will see an option for making the computer go to sleep. This is an interesting thing that has more to do with power consumption. It actually saves anything you have open on the computer and puts the computer into a low power mode. When you come back and want to get to work, you can simply press your Escape or your Enter key on your keyboard usually, and it will come back up with all of your applications and windows back open. This is great for people who know they're not going to be working overnight, but they don't want to keep the computer completely on. If you're using a laptop, you may also see something called Hibernate. Hibernate actually is something that is between sleep and a complete shutdown. The sleep mode simply puts you into a low power state, but the computer technically is still on and using some power. Hibernate saves everything, but also completely powers down. The nice thing about both sleep and hibernate is that when you bring them back up, they resume exactly where you left off. And that's the benefit of using either one of these instead of actually shutting the computer down. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we get into using applications and multitasking. So let's take a look at a couple of these options. I'm going to go ahead and restart the computer. Remember that once I click this, the computer will shut itself off and come back up. Let's watch this process. As the computer begins to reload itself, you'll see the same things that you saw when you did a cold boot. The process is the same, except that the warm boot is once we have the computer already running and we want to restart it, as opposed to starting it from scratch, if you will. There you go. Now you've done two things. You've actually powered up the computer and done a cold boot, as well as a warm boot. The last thing for us in this particular section is to go ahead and go through a shutdown process. This is likewise very simple. We're going to click on that Start button, come to our Power Options, and because I'm on Windows 7, I can simply click Shut Down. If you're on a prior version, you'll have to use that arrow and choose Shut Down from there. We'll go ahead and shut it down, and then we'll be all finished with this chapter, and we'll be ready to move on to mousing. In this case, you can see, or actually maybe you can't see, that we've actually completely powered down. The monitor has gone to black, and this is when you know that the computer is completely and safely turned off.
Good job.